This is the captain. Brace for impact. In this episode, I show you how to fly Victory Star Destroyers. As always, there are two variants, the Victory 1 class Star Destroyer and the Victory 2 class Star Destroyer. Each Victory class has one brace token, two redirect tokens, eight hull, one blue dice for anti-squadron attacks, has three command, three squadron, four engineering, has a maximum of speed two at one click at one and one click at the end of speed two and no clicks at um, one for speed two. Each VSD also has three shields on each hull facing except for the rear which only has one. Now for attack dice, the Victory 1 out the front has three reds and three blacks. Out the sides has two reds and one black. And in the rear it has two reds. Whereas on the Victory 2 uh, it has three reds, three blues at the front. Two reds and one blue out the sides and two reds out the rear. Now for upgrade slots, the Victory 1 comes with an uh, officer slot, a weapons team slot, offensive retrofit, ordnance and turbo lasers. And on the Victory 2, exactly the same thing, except it replaces the Ordnance for an Ion Cannon slot. The Victory 1 comes in at a total 73 points, whereas the Victory 2 comes in at 85 points. Uh, the Victory has a couple of roles. One of those roles is a Carrier role. So this is a Carrier build that was popular back in Wave 1 and 2. So you normally want to have a Victory 1 as a Carrier. Uh, you'd have boosted comms, flight controllers as minimum, and then you might even slap on a title like Corruptor, which uh, allows your bombers to have uh, an extra speed when they activate. Uh, you might even have Admiral Chirinu, who lets your squadrons uh, move, uh, even though engaged, distance 1 to 2, which also stacks on top of Corruptor. So it was a good way of moving fire sprays around at speed 4, um, even if they're engaged. And uh, it's also a good way to move uh, other bombers around if you pair it up with Rima. And the other role is a gunboat. So this is more uh, prevalent in Wave 6 with the release of disposable capacitators. And you'd have this on a Victory 2 class Star Destroyer because with, uh, with decaps you can, uh, you can discard the card and it will let you shoot your blue dice at long range rather than medium. Uh, that means you can also slap on other things to make your uh, dice rolling really good, such as leading shots. Uh, you can have gunnery teams on as well, so you can fire multiple targets in that uh, one opportunity. And also intel officers if you want to discard someone's defense tokens, such as brace. Also, don't forget you can add on any turbo laser upgrade of your choice, uh, depending on what you feel the situation will be when you uh, play your game. So, Generally, a good place to start is spinal armaments. Um, also, you could have XI-7s or H9s. You'd be coming up against a fleet of redirect or scatter. And uh, other things, maybe like quad uh, turbo laser turrets, uh, it could be a good idea as well. Okay, so here's a example of one of my favorite gunship builds. So I've got a Victory 2 with Warlord, Captain Nita, Gunnery teams, disposable capacitators, turbo laser rerope circuits, which uh, we'll be using on um, Captain Nita's uh, evade token, and heavy ion emplacements. Another fun combo is the Warlord and H9 turbo lasers. Uh, so, what this lets you do is on the anti squadron attack, which is one blue dice, it lets you get pretty much an automatic hit because on a blue dice, there's no blanks, there's only a critical, uh, a hit or a accuracy facing. So if you roll a hit, it's going to be a hit. If you roll a critical, you're going to turn the critical using H9 turbo lasers to an accuracy, right? And then using Warlord, you change the accuracy to a hit, right? And obviously if you roll an accuracy, you will use Warlord to change that to a hit. So no matter what you roll, it's going to be a hit. Now, victories have a couple of inherent weaknesses. And one of them is the fact that it's very slow and maneuvers like a brick. So, for instance, here, a Corvette has already done its attack run and it's gone past its front and you need to get your victory to turn in such a way to get the front arc back on, back on target. 
But at speed 2 to catch up, this is the only turn you can do. And as you can see, out of arc. It's also the same if you go to speed 1. You know, you're slowing down to try to get a turn harder, but the Corvette's going to get away and you're still out of arc. The other problem is VSDs don't have a defensive retrofit, which means they can't take electronic countermeasures. So this makes them really weak against uh, ships that guarantee an accuracy and do high damage output, such as MC-30s or uh, MC-80s equipped with HOME-1 or H9 turbo lasers. And this is really important because the Victory relies on uh, its brace as its only damage mitigation. There are a couple of ways around these weaknesses. You can uh, add Captain Brunson, Captain Nita, or Minister Tua to get options to mitigate damage when brace is not available. Now the Victory works with most admirals such as Motti, but the one that stands out the most is Moff Jajaran. And the reason that is, is because it lets you overcome the maneuverability problems that the Victory has. So if you sacrifice the shield, then you get, uh, at your current speed, the first your value has two clicks. A cool trick you can pull off with a gunboat type configuration VSD is in hyperspace assault. So here you see these corvettes are staying the hell away from the hyperspace token, but because a victory is so big, it can be distance one away from the token, deploy here, have gunnery teams to shoot both targets, and uh, even if the targets are at long range, you, you'll discard your, uh, your decaps and you should still be able to be a threat for those two ships. If your opponent activates something else first, then you get to you get the opportunity to destroy two ships. Whereas uh, if they activate one of these two corvettes, then they're only getting to save one and you get to destroy the other. Okay, and another tip for flying Victory Star Destroyers is uh, if you're in a medium range battle with another large ship or a medium ship, especially a Rebel one, um, and it's already activated, then on your movement, what you want to do is not this. So say speed one, and then everyone has the intendency to turn into the target, so that way they'll have their front arc in the uh, target zone. Now the reason you don't want to do that is because on your next activation, you're not going to get the double arc. So instead of going like that, what you want to do is simply drive straight ahead forward. Alright, so now you actually do have the double arc on your next activation. So yeah, so just in summary, if, you, if you're fighting at medium range uh, and you're flying side by side to each other, and then don't turn in, just simply keep flying forward. Another tip for um, flying Victory Star Destroyers to overcome their weaknesses is to deploy in the corner. Right, so you might deploy a Victory Star Destroyer like that in the corner facing upwards and then on the inside facing towards the inside of the board. And then you'd place your squadron screen in front of the Victory Star Destroyers at distance 2. Now if you're facing a Rebel player, this causes a lot of problems for them because most of them are predominantly um, broadsiders. So, you know, how are they going to attack this kind of position? They're going to place it here and what, fly forward into the bomber screen or they're going to try to come around, uh, which, you know, again, you activate your squadrons and you can maneuver your victories in such a way that they'll attack them. Yeah, so this kind of deployment is really good for if you're a second player, especially if you have things like contested outposts uh, and fire lanes. And it really depends on how you assess what the other player has. So keep that in mind. Now the reason you don't see Victory Star Destroyers that much these days is because of these two other ships, the Imperial Star Destroyer and the Quasar. Now, what this means is if you pay a couple of more points you get an Imperial Star Destroyer that does everything a Victory can do, but better. So it can be a better gunship, it can be a better carrier, it has more hull, it has more firepower, it's faster, it's speed 3, it's more maneuverable, uh, it's got more legroom, you get the idea. Uh, basically, if you kit out a Victory Star Destroyer, you pretty much get an ISD, so you might as well just buy the ISD, right? Uh, and, and the ISD has four variants, and most of those variants come with uh, a defensive retrofit, 
which means you can equip ECMs or early warning systems. Whereas on the right here, you have the Quasar, which fills the role of a carrier. So it's the same size as the Victory. It's not as strong, but just if you plan to have just a carrier that buffs your squadrons and it can activate a lot of them, then a Quasar can do that job better than a Victory can. It can activate more squadrons and it can buff them a lot better too. And uh, also, it's very, it's very much more maneuverable and it's speed 3 compared to the Victory speed 2. And the other big win for the Quasar 2 is it's a lot cheaper than the Victory Star Destroyer. Uh, I mean, like the cheapest Victory is 73 points and the cheapest Quasar is 54 points. And if you kit out the Quasar to be a super carrier, uh, you know, it's still less than a Victory and it can activate more squadrons than a Victory can. So that's really important in the environment of this game where points matters and, you know, that, that savings of 20 points could mean you can upgrade, uh, you know, some of your squadrons to aces or just have more squadrons. So that's all I got for you for the Victory Star Destroyer. Look, it's not a bad ship. You just won't see it uh, flown a lot in a lot of local games these days because of the, the availabilities of other better ships. But if you're a new player and you don't have access to those other ships, then hopefully this video has helped you. In saying that, your veteran players out there are always trying to find ways to making this ship work. You might see it in local tournaments, regionals, and uh, store champs. Who knows? We might even see it as a uh, contender at Worlds. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Support us on Patreon if you want to see us uh, do more of these kind of videos. This is Veteran Captain Ken, signing out.